So today's topic is 2.6, talking about the domain and range of functions, and that's found on pages 93 to 100. Curriculum outcome today is to extend understanding of functions, including algebraic functions, transcendental functions, and piecewise functions, including absolute value. And our lesson objective is number one, to be able to find the domain and range of a function by looking at the graph of the function. Number two, to learn which types of functions have restrictions on their domain. And number three, to learn strategies that will help us find the range of a function. So we know from previous lessons in previous courses that the domain of a function is basically all the x values in which the function exists, and the range is all the y values in which that function exists. If we're lucky enough to get a sketch of the function, stating the domain and range in interval notation is quite easy. So here's our example. It says, find the domain and range of the following functions. So here's our first one. So our domain, we usually use the x variable. And so we can see that this function goes everywhere from left to right because these arrows, not only do they indicate that the graph goes up, they also go out to the side. So in interval notation, we would just say that domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity. Now the range is a little bit different. The range is your y values. And our y values on this graph, you can see that it comes down and touches the x-axis. So that's a minimum value of zero. And the arrows indicate that it goes on forever. So it equals zero, but it does not ever get, uh, it doesn't equal infinity because it cannot equal infinity. Our second function here, our domain. Well, we can see that the graph starts on the left, but it doesn't actually start at a value of negative two. So we would use an open bracket for that. And then this arrow here indicates it goes all the way to the positive side. So that means it's from negative two to infinity. Our range, are our y values again. Again, it doesn't exist at negative two, but it exists very close to negative two, and it continues to go upward, so that would be negative two all the way up to positive infinity. And our final graph, um, you can, if you take a look at the scale, we're looking at each square being one. So our, our domain in this case is negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six. So our domain it starts at negative six, and that's with a square bracket. And it ends at one, two, three, four. Also a square bracket, because these are closed circles. And our range, this is negative nine, it starts at, it goes as high as, uh, that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So as low as negative nine, but as high as seven. So now that we know what a normal version of a number of functions looks like, and that's what we did in 2.2, we can use this knowledge to help find the domain and range of functions without having a picture of the function in front of us. And this is where things get a little bit tricky. So in finding the domain, there were three types of functions that we looked at in 2.2 that had restrictions on the domain. So functions that didn't just go from negative infinity to positive infinity and never um, without any breaking. Um, the first one was radical functions, and that's radical functions with an even index, and that's because you can't take the square root or the fourth root of a negative number. Um, next one, log functions, and that means we know that we can't take the log of zero or a negative number, so that had a restriction on the domain. And rational functions, we can't divide by zero because that gives us either undefined, which are vertical asymptotes, or indeterminate, which are holes. So by keeping these types of functions in, lot, in mind, sorry, it will help us determine what the domain of a function can be. And when you're finding the domain of the function, you should always be asking yourself, what values of x can I not have in this function? Because in a lot of the cases, you'll have a large range of values for your domain, but there'll just be a few that you can't have. So during the next few examples, I'll go over some strategies that can help you find the domain of functions, and you might want to write these strategies down. So for, so for the first example, it says find the domain of the following function. So f of x equals x cubed minus 2x. Well, we always want to check and make sure if it's a rational function, a root function, or a log function. This is none of them. And we know that an x cubed function kind of looks like this. Or it could go the opposite way. But we know that there are no restrictions on the domain. So the domain is negative infinity to infinity. Our second function. Here's a root function. So we know there's a restriction on the domain. And it's x minus 4 is our function. Um, you could look at this a number of ways. When we did transformations, we know that this means that the function has moved four units to the right. So normally a root x function starts at 0, 0, something like this. But it's been moved four uh, units to the right. And so that just means that our domain is going to be from 4 to infinity. Now the other way is just thinking of values. If I plug in a value of 3 here, 
I get 3 minus 4. I can't take the square root of that. If I plug in a value of 4, I get 4 minus 4. I can take the square root of, of 0. Um, and that's why my domain starts at 4. And any number greater than 4 also gets me a good answer. Our next one here, h of x equals x squared minus 4, the square root of x squared minus 4. Now, in this case, you kind of need to know what x squared minus 4 looks like. And that's just a parabola that goes through 2 and negative 2. And we know that if we're taking the square root of this thing, we can't take the square root of a negative number. So we can't take a square root of anything underneath the x-axis. So that means our domain in this case is going to be, I should put the right signs in here, uh, anything to the left of negative 2, I could take the square root of anything here, and I could take the square root of anything there. So my domain ends up being a negative infinity to negative 2, or 2 to positive infinity. Our fourth example here, we have k of x equaling 2x divided by x minus 5. We know that this is a rational function, and rational functions have um, denominator, when the denominator equals 0, sorry, they have vertical asymptotes. So this means that there's a vertical asymptote at 5. And so if we were to graph this thing, there would be a vertical asymptote here. Probably looks something like this. Um, now, the problem is that we can't have a 0 here. So that's part of our, our restriction on our domain. So our domain goes from everything from negative infinity to 5, and then 5 to infinity. And that is a part of our domain. And finally, our log function. So log 4 of 16 minus x squared. Well, again, knowing we'll use the same method as I used here, kind of like a sign analysis. I know that this is a parabola that opens downwards and that the two x-intercepts are at 4 and negative 4. And I know that I can't take the square root of, or sorry, I can't take the log of a negative number, so I can't take the log of anything over here or here, and I can't take the log of 0, which means the domain in this case is going to be everything from negative 4 to 4, but it can't include negative 4 or 4 because I can't take the log of 0. So it'll just be negative 4 to 4, but I need to have the curved brackets instead of the square brackets because it can't equal negative 4 or 4. So finding the range. So finding the range is much trickier than when you're finding the domain because not only do you need to consider the domain of the function because that's what you're plugging into your function in order to find the result, which is what we call the range, but you also need to consider what the result actually is. So does that approach a really, really big number, a really small number, or does it approach a constant? Knowing the range of our normal functions will help us out a lot, so we can always have a visual of what those functions normally look like. And there's four questions you kind of want to ask yourself. Number one, what happens to my y value if I plug in a really, really big or a really, really small value for x? Number two, what happens to f of x near the vertical asymptotes? So does it approach positive infinity or does it approach negative infinity? because that also is then part of your range. Number three, when dealing with root or log functions, is there a max or min value that I can have underneath the root sign or after the log? And number four, are there any sort of horizontal asymptotes? Because a horizontal asymptote definitely affects the range. So here's our example. It says find the domain and range of the following functions. So our first function is f of x equals two to the power of x minus four. So if I'm thinking of my domain, I'm thinking about what can I plug into this function? And so I can plug anything into this function because it's not a root function, it's not a radical function, it's not a rational function. So my domain, here's another way of, I usually write it, is just negative infinity to infinity. I just use a D for domain. Now our range is what happens after we plug in really big numbers or really small numbers into this thing. So if I plug in a really, really big number, I subtract 4 from it, I still get a really, really big number. 2 to the power of a really big number is just infinity. And now I think of what's the smallest number I can have in the exponent. And the smallest number I can have in the exponent is, well, there isn't one, because I can keep on putting in a negative value, because that's part of my domain. So 2 to the power of a really, really negative number is just 0. And it can never equal 0, because if I remember what a root, uh, sorry, a exponential function looks like, it looks like something like this. So my range will always be from 0 to infinity. All right, the second example, log 5 of x squared plus 25. Well, my domain again, can I plug in any number whatsoever? Now, it's a log function, so I have to be careful. But since I'm squaring x, x, whatever I plug in for x, and then adding 25 to it, I actually don't have any restrictions on this domain because any number I plug in into here, I square it, it becomes positive. So if it's a negative, it becomes positive. If it's a positive, it becomes positive. And even if it's zero, I'm going to add 25 to it anyway, so it's always going to be positive. So 
my domain in this case is negative infinity to positive infinity. Now my range, a little bit different. If I plug in a really big positive number, I square it, it becomes even more positive. Take the log of that thing, it's always going to be a big number, so I get infinity. If I take a really negative number, I square it, I add 25. Well, it's still, when I square it, it becomes positive, so I still get the same result. So now I want to take a look at what's just inside the brackets here. Is there a minimum value for something for inside the brackets? And that minimum value would be 25. If x equals 0, this is 25. So then I ask myself, well, what's a log 5 of 25? So what exponent do I give 5 to get 25? And the answer there is 2. And so that can equal 2 because log 5 of 25 is actually equal to 2. So I can use a square bracket. So here's what I'm, I mean where you have to take each of these examples and you kind of have to do them separately. There's no set way to do these things. You have to consider all your values for x and what your results are for y. So h of x equals square root of 2x minus 9. Well, my domain, there's going to be a restriction because I'm talking about the square root. And I know the x-intercept for this thing is going to be if 2x minus 9 equals 0. So my x-intercept is going to be 9 over 2. So that's part of my domain. That's a restriction of my domain. I can put in a 9 over 2 and take the square root of it, and I still get an answer. Um, so I can use a square bracket there. But I can't take the square root of anything less than um, when I put in a 9 over 2. So that's why it's the left-hand side of my domain. And on the right-hand side, any number greater than x that I plug in here, I can always take the square root of, so I get infinity. Now the range, we need to recall what a square root function looks like. It looks like something like that. So my range here is going to be 0, and it can equal 0, because I can take the square root of a 0, and all the way to infinity. And my final one is a rational function. I want to take a look at my domain. Well, in this case, it's a little bit easier, because I can't get a 0 in the bottom. So my domain is going to actually be... Um, everything. I can plug in any sort of value for x and I'm going to get a value for y. My range, however, a little bit different. So I think about what I can plug in here. If I plug in a really, really big number and I plug it into the top and the bottom, if I square that really, really big number, it gets even bigger. So the, the value on the bottom of this function is always going to be greater than the value on the top because I'm squaring whatever that number is as opposed to just multiplying it by 2. So when I have a really, really big number on the bottom, and a smaller number on top, when I divide those things, I, I'll get something very, very close to zero. So that's one of my uh, restrictions on the, on the range. Now, if I plug in a really, 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 really small number and I square it, it becomes really, really, really small. It's always going to be smaller on the bottom than it is on the top. And when I divide a number um, that's bigger on the top by a really, really small decimal, that value gets even bigger so that's why it's going to be going towards infinity. Can this thing actually equal zero? Uh, yes, it can. Or no, it can't, sorry. So it's, um, it is a, a round bracket. So in summary, the domain of a function is all the x values where that function exists. And the range of, the val of a function, sorry, is all the y values where that function exists. Given the graph of a function, the domain and range can easily be determined. But if given the equation of the function, finding the domain of range requires what I call a little bit of brain work. You actually have to think about it a little bit. So the domain of most functions is going to be negative infinity to positive infinity, except for radical functions, rational functions, and log functions. And in these three cases, you can do a sign analysis, which is usually quite helpful. And what we did was just kind of visualize what that function would look like, and then what we could actually say take the square root of, and what we can't take the square root of. Uh, the range of the function is determined by the domain, that's a big thing, and what happens after you plug the values for domain into your function. So you might actually have to consider plugging in a big number, what do I get? Plugging in a small number, what do I get? So your assignments on pages is 99 to 100. Good luck, and we'll see you in class.